What is up guys and welcome back to the channel. I hope you guys had a wonderful Christmas and New Year's. So today I was thinking about doing kind of a part one and a half about the electric wiring, the wiring harness here, and then maybe jetting the carburetor because I know that some of you guys are gonna have questions about that stuff. And I don't really wanna put this in the main video because in part two, we're gonna be busy taking that thing apart. So I was thinking today I have some extra time I did hit 3,000 subscribers, which means so much to me. I really appreciate that. So I decided to do a bonus video. So here goes. We got wiring and we got carb jetting. So if you guys think this video will be interesting, I suggest you stick around and watch. The first thing I want to talk about before we get to this big mess of wires, I wanted to tell you guys a little bit about this engine that we're putting in the mini Jeep. So if you guys didn't watch the previous episode, we basically unboxed it and unboxed all of our accessories and all the parts and stuff. So this engine is 250 cc's of cubic displacement. It's actually called a CG250 based off of the Honda CG125. Then they made a 250 version a few years later. So some people say this motor has been recreated from Chinese manufacturers. They've tried to recreate this motor with very, very close dimensions. That could be true, but there's also rumors about how this engine could be made in the same factory and they already use a lot of the same parts. It just doesn't have Honda printed on the side of it. So if you wanna know a little bit more about this motor, there is a engine VIN number and this one specifically reads 167 FMM. So those random numbers can actually be decoded and you can find out exactly what kind of engine this motor is. So the first number you see is a one. That basically means that you have one piston. The second thing you're gonna see is the 67. So if I recall correctly, this means that your piston is gonna be 67 millimeters in bore diameter. So one of the things I've been a little bit frustrated about trying to get this engine is I have seen 197 cc variants and I've seen 249 cc variants. And people have told me you can get images of the 250cc because it reads it on the side, but people often get bait and switched and they'll end up with the 197cc. So they'll be saying, oh dude, my 250cc is really slow. Well, it's probably because you don't have the actual 250. This is a 250 because I know it on the side and it says 67 millimeters for the bore diameter. So hopefully it's a 250, I guess. I really hope so. But if you guys happen to know how to read the VIN number to differentiate the smaller engine size, please let me know because it'll help me and everybody else out there watching this video. All right, so finally we're moving on to the giant wad of wires and whatever the heck all this does. Um, I don't even know fully, but I'm here to try and see if I can make a little bit of sense of it for you guys. So let's take a look. So to start things off in a somewhat understandable way here, this is a wiring diagram for this motor. As you can see, you have your 12 volt battery and everything runs out and that's what it looks like. Everything here, you need to be matching all of the colors. So anything that's black and red goes to black and red. Anything that's green goes to green, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Except for a couple of like the last ones you'd need to put together, they're gonna be off colored and it's a pain in the butt, but you just gotta stick it together. Like um, this guy right here, this does work. That is yellow and red and that is yellow and red. And you wanna make sure that they are in the right terminal. The black wires and some of the green ones are gonna be your ground. As you can see right here, that is a ground. Do not try to ground it on there. You will not start your motor. Of course we did that and it didn't work. The pink and the white are the same wire. That pink wire right there, it's coming out of the motor. That one attaches to the white wire like that. We had to rewire this harness because whoever put this thing together messed up on the wiring on this one and on this guy here. These two were swapped. So you need to take those out with like a tiny little needle or something. You might have the tool for it. 
but just take those two wires and swap those. And this guy here, we also had to rewire that one. It's got the two on it. Also this right here, this is a gear display. It also comes out of the motor and you don't need this for the motor to run. So you can technically just tuck that someplace um, if you don't need it. But that's pretty much what you have to do for the wiring harness. So this stuff, we got it to work. I'm gonna hook this up to the battery and show you guys that this motor will crank. So let's do that. It does crank. Of course you wanna take that out because it will suck that right up. So the wiring isn't super fun, but it's one of those things you'll eventually figure out. So with that aside, let's take a look at jetting the new carburetor. Now this is gonna be pretty interesting. So I hope this will provide some good information. So this right here is the new carburetor for the CG250. And this is the intake side. That is the engine side manifold. This is a PWK slide style carburetor. It's a PWK30. So let's go ahead and take this guy apart. And I'm gonna show you guys how to put the right jets in this to get the right fuel mixture. So first things first, I'm just gonna pop that guy off. The first thing you wanna do is take off this guy. Sometimes these can be pretty hard to get off, so it's gonna feel like you're gonna break it, but just know that you will not if you're careful. And there you go. So that is the top of the carburetor, and there's your slide. We'll get that out in just a second. So all this, that can pop off, and you can put that over in the corner. So now you should be able to get your slide out, and there is your needle. And as you can see, that is your needle position clip. And for us, the third one from the top is exactly how we want it to be set up. So next up is the carburetor bowl. So same thing, your two and a half millimeter Allen. And you should be able to see, this is your bowl of the carburetor. So we'll just stick that over there. And this is your float, the carburetor float. And this is how it knows when to stop adding fuel to the carburetor. So the float is held on by a little pin and you should see there, there's a little pin. You wanna pull that out, but yeah, we're gonna put this aside as well. So now we got all this apart. And as you can see there, you have your pilot jet and the main jet. So let's start off with the pilot jet here. Now let's see what the carburetor had in there. This is a, this is a 38 pilot jet, which is very low elevation. Not super low elevation, but definitely lower. So I did some AI researching and I asked a question on what jet size to use for 7,000 feet and riding from 30 to 70 degrees. We wanna have a pilot jet of 25 to 30. And this one's a 38, which is what came out of the carburetor. And obviously that's a little bit rich. So if you buy this kit, which I'll leave down in the description, you get a bunch of jets um, that come with it. So you actually get to do just this on your own, which is pretty cool. Okay, so the leanest jet that I found in this kit was a number 32, and the highest I can go is 30, and maybe I can order somewhere between a 25 and 30 uh, later on. Now moving on to the main jet, I'm gonna use a six millimeter socket, and the one you wanna get off is the smaller one, not the larger one. The smaller one is the main jet. So you wanna pull that out just like that. It looks like this jet is gonna be a little bit rich also. This is a number 125, and we're gonna want a 105 to 115. So I'm gonna grab something in there, and we'll stick it into the carburetor. You always wanna start on the leaner side, and work your way up to richer as you adjust your jets. So for us, we have a super nice 110, as you can see there, and we're gonna go ahead and put this back inside the carburetor, just like that. Starting with the float, you're gonna to wanna to put this guy on there, just like that. It just kinda of hangs, and you wanna make sure that little float goes down that hole, as you can see there. And as you do that, you'll be able to line up your float holes and get this guy right back through there. Now, when you're putting your bowl back on, it goes on in this orientation because we had our pipe that goes that way. 
So once you get that on, your holes should line up there and there, and then you can put everything back together. And yeah, that's that. So just like that, we just changed the jets in the carburetor along with the um, needle position. Now, of course, you might want to do that multiple times if you're messing with different jet sizes over and over. But yeah, I hope this provided some helpful information. And I know that it was a little bit tedious, but there you go. That is wiring for the CG250 and carburetor adjustment. I also took the carburetor off of the mini Jeep. This is a PZ22 and it's also a slide carb. Um, yeah, just thought I'd mess around with it a little bit. For those of you trying to learn some stuff, I hope you learned a lot. And yeah, in the next episode, the mini Jeep's coming apart. So I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you guys had a wonderful time over the holidays. And yeah, with that, I will see you guys in the next one.